going on guys? The Comics Kid 299 here. Today I want to talk to you about Green Lantern Rebirth. Uh, this is a six issue miniseries uh, that kind of brought Hal Jordan back into the limelight as Green Lantern. Uh, this is written by Jeff Johns and illustrated by a really horrible human being. Uh, so I'm not the biggest fan of Jeff Johns' writing and I'm definitely not a very big fan of Hal Jordan. Uh, but a few weeks ago on uh, Geeky Gentleman, Sid Partu's channel, uh, me, Ian, and Alfie, uh, I don't remember what we were discussing but we got to talking about uh, Hal Jordan, uh, his turn as Parallax, and then uh, Jeff Johns kind of reforming the character a little bit in Green Lantern Rebirth. Uh, and uh, I always was under the impression that uh, Hal Jordan committed genocide, and then Jeff Johns comes in and says, no, that was a separate entity called Parallax. Hal is completely blameless in that uh, he was not in control at all, and uh, he's a good guy, and we should all give him a big hug. And uh, Ian told me, no, that's not exactly how it played out. Uh, according to Ian, uh, Hal Jordan's uh, desire and capability to commit genocide was always inside him and Parallax just gave him a little bit of a nudge to turn him into uh, the supervillain that he was in the mid-1990s. And I thought that was much more interesting than what I thought they had done, uh, where they basically say yes, he did a bad thing, but it wasn't really him, so we can go back to putting Hal Jordan on underoos again. Uh, I thought that was what they did. So I bought and read this book and uh, it's not exactly what Ian uh, told me. Uh, it's more what I thought it was. Uh, before I get into talking about the book itself, I want to read a little excerpt from uh, the series pitch that Jeff Johns wrote. Uh, this is where it's titled, How Will Hal Jordan Be Absolved in the Eyes of Our Heroes? If Hal Jordan killed one person, there may be a chance at redemption. As Parallax, he killed dozens more. Okay, so I don't think that Jeff Johns knows how to do math. Like, legitimately, I don't think he knows numbers at all. Uh, there are 3,600 Green Lantern sectors. I know that because I read this book. I assume that Jeff Johns Johns knows that because he wrote this book. Uh, so Hal Jordan killed a whole lot more than dozens of people. He killed over 3,000 people. Uh, Jeff Johns seems to be forgetting that. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. Uh, we need to absolve him of this. He can have the potential inside him, which was exploited, but he cannot be responsible for these actions. So, that's it. Uh, I don't know what Jeff Johns does uh, throughout the rest of his run as Green Lantern, but I know that I'm not interested in reading any more of his Green Lantern because he straight up says that he does not want Hal Jordan to be responsible for what he did. I'm not okay with that. Uh, Hal Jordan killed over 3,000 Green Lanterns. Uh, I want you to address that. I want that to be part of his backstory. Uh, for a very long time, uh, I used to say that Hal Jordan only became interesting after he committed genocide. Uh, he was a very boring character before uh, the Emerald Dawn storyline where he became Parallax. I was much more interested in him as a raving supervillain and then later as a reformed raving supervillain than I was as a cardboard cutout from the 1950s. Uh, and Jeff Johns wants to bring Hal Jordan back because he clearly has a thing for this character and doesn't care about any of the other Green Lanterns nearly as much, and he wants to undo all of the stuff that happened in Emerald Dawn, but it would be lazy to say, oh, someone else did it. So he's doing that, and he's kind of saying, well, Hal has it inside him, but we're not ever going to talk about that again. Uh, later on uh, in that pitch, he says that this is just one moment of Hal's life. We're going to move on to some other moments. And I'd rather you not do that. I would rather see an exploration of this guy who realizes that, yes, he was corrupted by an outside force, but he had that inside him all along, and it was his desire to murder the Guardians and murder the rest of the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, I am much more interested in seeing an exploration of that than, oh, it wasn't my fault. I guess we can all go back to having milkshakes and shaking hands with each other. Uh, I don't really like that as much. Uh, having said that, the story itself is okay. Uh, it's a little convoluted if you're not very familiar with everything that came before. Uh, because this asks you, right off the bat, to be familiar with uh, Hal Jordan turning evil and exterminating dozens of people, according to Jeff Johns. Uh, it asks you to be familiar with the Spectra and his place in the DC Universe, uh, Sinestro and uh, his time as a Green Lantern, and then uh, his corruption and fall from grace. Uh, it asks you to juggle a lot of balls as it tries to connect all of that in saying that Hal Jordan was not as responsible for all of this as what we originally thought. Uh, now, I do like the idea that uh, Hal Jordan uh, is coming back, I guess, if you're going to take that and run with it and say uh, nobody has forgiven him, uh, he still has a lot to atone for. I'm okay with that. The problem is, in this uh, extra material at the back of the book, uh, Jeff Johns makes it very clear that he's not interested in doing a story of atonement. He's interested in doing 
something else. I don't know, and I'm not going to find out. Uh, but uh, I don't like this because my favorite Earth Lantern is Kyle Rayner. Uh, I find him to be much more interesting than Hal Jordan, and uh, this book's very existence pushes Kyle Rayner out of the limelight. Now, I've had people tell me before, oh no, how, uh, Kyle doesn't go anywhere. He's still around. Yeah, but he's not the main Lantern. I don't want to have to dig through six dozen Green Lantern books to find that one book that Kyle is in where he's leading the New Guardians across the universe. I don't want to read that. I just want to read Kyle Rayner's Adventures as a Green Lantern. And maybe I should say that I'm happy that he was Green Lantern for as long as he was, and then Hal Jordan comes back and Kyle basically has to pack his bags and go somewhere else. Uh, I'm not happy about that, though, uh, because Hal Jordan is not as interesting of a character as Kyle Rayner. Uh, also, uh, I guess Jeff Johns thinks that every character in the DC Universe has to have a tragic backstory and a parental death, uh, because uh, we find out here that Hal Jordan's dad was also a test pilot, and he died in a crash landing, uh, and then we get the origin of Hal's bomber jacket. Uh, that's really dumb. Uh, we don't need an origin for a piece of clothing. He does the same thing when he does Flash Rebirth, where he does the origin of Barry Allen's bow tie, and then he says that Barry Allen's mom was murdered. Uh, what if Barry Allen is just a dork who wears a bow tie? Uh, do we really need an origin for a piece of clothes. Uh, that's really dumb. As far as I'm concerned, Hal Jordan's origin is that he was a test pilot, and then he got called to Avon Sur as Avon Sur was dying, and then he gets the Green Lantern ring. That's the origin. We don't need tragic backstory where his dad died, and his dad gave him the bomber jacket, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're even told early in the book that Hal was in the Air Force uh, before he was a test pilot. So if anything, you could just say that that's from his time in the Air Force. We don't need a tragic backstory for the bomber jacket. That was just really unnecessary and really dumb. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, do I like this book? Not really. Uh, there's not really anything here that I enjoyed. Uh, I could have been made to like this if we had this as a springboard for Hal Jordan uh, beginning a life of atoning for everything that he did. But that's very clearly not what Jeff Johns is interested in doing. Uh, he is very clearly interested in saying, uh, let's all forget about the parallax thing as quickly as we can. Uh, Hal Jordan's back, baby, and let's all give him a big kiss. Uh, that's what he wants to do, and uh, if he's interested in boring cardboard cutouts, then fine. Uh, but I don't want to read any of this. So uh, I thought that maybe I was going to uh, give this a chance and see if it was uh, worth its time. Uh, it was not. Uh, so anyway, uh, those are my thoughts on Green Lantern Rebirth. I hope that you guys liked this video. And uh, if you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will try to be back later in the future with some more videos. In the meantime, you guys have a good one. Catch you later.